Most people imagine fat as a single, uniform layer under the skin, but visceral fat plays by its own rules. It lives deep around the abdominal organs, in a space where metabolic activity runs far hotter than in surface fat. That alone makes it more biologically active and more stubborn. Scientists often describe visceral fat as inflammatory, not because it's dramatic, but because it constantly releases chemical signals that alter how your body handles energy. What makes this fat especially tricky is the way it talks to your liver. Since visceral fat drains straight into the portal vein, its fatty acids hit the liver first, flooding it with fuel at moments when the body doesn't really need it. This disrupts insulin signaling and encourages fat storage. It's a metabolic loop that quietly grows the belly from the inside out. Another detail that surprises people, visceral fat reacts faster to the right kind of training compared to subcutaneous fat. It's sensitive to mitochondrial efficiency, insulin improvements, and lower intensity aerobic stimulation. That's why zone 2 walking keeps popping up in research on deep belly fat loss. And that's the hook. This hidden, stubborn fat is also the fat most willing to burn once you trigger its weak spots. You'll see exactly where those weak spots are as the video unfolds. Before we go on, drop a comment telling me where you're watching from. I love seeing this community grow around the world. Zone 2 isn't the sweat-dripping, gasping-for-air kind of workout. It's the easy, conversational pace that feels almost too light to matter. But inside the body, especially in your mitochondria, this zone is a metabolic golden hour. Researchers call it the range where your cells learn to burn fat more efficiently without being pushed into emergency mode. The key is that Zone 2 uses mostly oxygen and fat as its fuel source. When you move at this steady pace, you're training your mitochondria to oxidize fatty acids, including visceral fat, at a higher rate. Think of it as teaching your body to prefer fat as its default energy currency during activity. Another thing people overlook is that Zone 2 improves metabolic flexibility. That means your body becomes better at switching between burning carbohydrates and burning fat depending on the situation. Metabolic flexibility is directly linked to lower visceral fat and better long-term health. And here's the kicker. Many people walk every day but never hit this metabolic sweet spot because they go either too slow or too fast. You'll learn how to identify the right pace in the next No Gadgets Needed. Here's the simplest truth. You don't need a lab test or a sports watch to find your Zone 2. Researchers consistently report that Zone 2 lines up with a comfortable but purposeful effort. You should be able to talk but not sing. You should breathe a little deeper but not feel like you're chasing your breath. One practical cue scientists recommend is the nasal breathing test. If you can maintain nose breathing for several minutes but feel slightly challenged doing so, you're likely in Zone 2. It's a surprisingly reliable indicator because nasal airflow changes right around the intensity where your body begins leaning more on fat than carbohydrates. Another cue is the slight warmth sensation. Your body heats up, but you're nowhere near sweating through your shirt. This aligns with the physiological point where lactate levels remain low and stable, a hallmark of true zone 2. Before we move on, answer something in the comments. What's the hardest part for you? Finding the right pace or staying consistent with it? Your answer helps other viewers and boosts the discussion around the science. If you could zoom into your muscles during a Zone 2 walk, you'd see a quiet transformation taking place. Your mitochondria, the tiny structures that create cellular energy, begin working at a pace they're designed for, not overloaded by intensity or starved by inactivity. This steady input teaches them to multiply and become more efficient. One of the most important outcomes is something called fatty acid oxidation. At Zone 2, your mitochondria prefer fat molecules as their fuel choice. The more often you train at this intensity, the better they get at burning fat at rest and during activity. Studies consistently show an increase in the number of mitochondria after repeated Zone 2 sessions. 
This mitochondrial upgrade matters for visceral fat because deeper abdominal fat is especially responsive to improvements in metabolic efficiency. As your cells get better at handling fat, they pull more fatty acids from circulation and visceral fat begins shrinking from the inside. The process isn't dramatic in the moment, but its effects compound. Think of Zone 2 as investing in a metabolic makeover rather than chasing quick sweaty wins. Your body doesn't tap visceral fat the moment you start walking. At the very beginning, most of the energy comes from stored carbohydrates. But as your walk continues and your intensity stays inside Zone 2, your metabolism begins shifting toward fat use, a transition that's heavily influenced by oxygen availability and mitochondrial readiness. Scientific studies show that the body begins mobilizing more visceral fat when low-intensity exercise stays consistent for long enough that carbohydrate demand goes down. This can take several minutes, and the timing varies from person to person depending on fitness level and insulin sensitivity. Once the body reaches this fat preference point, visceral fat becomes a surprisingly accessible fuel source. Because of its location near the liver, the body can break it down and redistribute it efficiently when metabolic conditions favor fat oxidation, which Zone 2 encourages. And here's an encouraging detail. The more you practice Zone 2, the faster your body reaches this fat-burning transition. Your system remembers, adapts, and becomes more efficient over time. One of the most common misconceptions is that Zone 2 walking must last an hour or more to matter. In reality, research shows measurable shifts in abdominal fat with sessions as short as 30 minutes, as long as the intensity stays steady. The key is consistency, not heroic effort. The earliest improvements don't come from visible changes in your waist, but from metabolic shifts. Studies on low-intensity aerobic exercise show reductions in liver fat, improvements in insulin sensitivity, and increased mitochondrial enzymes after just a few weeks. These are the quiet changes that pave the way for visceral fat to shrink. Most people begin noticing a difference around the six-week mark, although metabolic improvements start much earlier. This is why many researchers emphasize patience. Visceral fat responds to internal improvements before it shows external ones. If you've ever felt like nothing was happening during those first few weeks, the truth is that a lot was happening, just not yet visible in the mirror. The most common mistake isn't duration or intensity, it's inconsistency in intensity. Many people drift in and out of zone two without realizing it. They slow down when distracted, speed up when energized, and end up spending very little time in the actual fat oxidation zone. Another issue is walking too fast. When you push too hard, you cross into zone 3, where your body begins burning much more carbohydrate than fat. It's still healthy, but it's no longer the stimulus that specifically encourages visceral fat mobilization. A third slip-up is not giving the walks enough cumulative weekly volume. Even perfect Zone 2 sessions won't compensate for a weekly total that's too low. Your mitochondria adapt to repetition, not randomness. Correcting this mistake is simple. Pick a pace, stay with it, and train your mind to resist the urge to drift. This single adjustment has helped countless people finally see results. Visceral fat responds to steady metabolic signals, not sporadic spikes. High-intensity training can burn calories fast, but it doesn't provide the prolonged fat-oxidizing environment that Zone 2 does. Think of Zone 2 as a message repeated calmly and consistently until your metabolism adapts. Your mitochondria thrive on repetition. Each Zone 2 session tells yourselves this is the fuel you need to get better at using. Over time, your body becomes more efficient at oxidizing fat around the clock, not just during exercise. That is one of the reasons low-intensity training is linked with long-term reductions in visceral fat. Another reason consistency wins is hormonal stability. Zone 2 keeps cortisol relatively low compared to intense workouts. Lower cortisol means fewer signals telling the body to hold on to deep abdominal fat for protection. When people finally understand that consistency rewires metabolism, the whole process becomes less about willpower and more about habit. 
Visceral fat and insulin resistance feed into each other, creating a cycle that many people don't realize they're stuck in. The more insulin resistant you become, the more your body stores fat in the abdominal cavity. But here's the good news. Zone 2 disrupts this loop in multiple ways. First, this intensity improves insulin sensitivity by increasing the muscle's ability to pull glucose from the bloodstream without needing much insulin. This alone reduces the hormonal push toward fat storage. Over weeks of consistent training, glucose uptake becomes noticeably more efficient. Zone 2 also increases the number of mitochondria inside muscle cells, which enhances metabolic flexibility. A body that can easily switch to fat burning doesn't store as much around the organs. This is why studies consistently find reductions in visceral fat in people who add moderate intensity walking to their weekly routine. And when insulin resistance improves, visceral fat becomes easier to mobilize. It's not magic, it's physiology lining up at the right angle. If there's one small adjustment that gives a measurable boost, it's walking before meals or with lower glycogen levels. When your carbohydrate stores are slightly depleted, your body naturally shifts toward fat oxidation, a perfect match for the slow, steady demand of zone 2. This doesn't mean fasting is required. Even a few hours without eating can change the metabolic environment. Research shows that low-intensity exercise performed in a post-absorptive state increases fat oxidation compared to the same workout done right after a meal. Another powerful adjustment is maintaining consistent pacing. Even small fluctuations, slowing down for notifications, or speeding up unintentionally reduce the time you spend in true zone 2. A stable rhythm equals stable fat oxidation. This is one of those tweaks that feels almost too simple, but it often accelerates results for people who've been stuck at a plateau. Scientists have spent years trying to pinpoint the sweet spot where Zone 2 walking produces the biggest improvements in metabolic health. While there's no single number for everyone, studies often land in a similar range, around 150 to 210 minutes per week. This is the point where fatty acid oxidation, insulin sensitivity, and mitochondrial efficiency begin improving in a measurable way. One of the key findings is that the weekly total matters more than the structure. You can do 5 sessions of 30 minutes or 3 sessions of 50 minutes. The body responds to the cumulative effect. For people who struggle with time, even spreading sessions across shorter daily walks still activates the same metabolic pathways. Higher volumes, such as 300 minutes per week, offer even greater benefits for visceral fat specifically. Research on people with metabolic syndrome shows that longer weekly exposure to low-intensity aerobic exercise leads to sharper reductions in abdominal fat than shorter durations. The takeaway is simple. The more of your week you spend gently nudging your mitochondria, the faster your visceral fat adapts. It's not speed that matters, it's presence. One of the first signs isn't actually visible. It's energy stability throughout the day. When your body becomes better at burning fat, the dips and crashes between meals become less dramatic. This improvement often arrives before any change appears on your waistline, and it's a reliable indicator that deep metabolic shifts are taking place. Another early signal is improved breathing control during walks. After a few weeks of Zone 2, the same pace that once felt slightly effortful becomes smoother. This reflects mitochondrial adaptation. Your muscles are literally handling fuel more efficiently. Some people also notice warmth in the abdominal area during or after walks. While subtle, this sensation often coincides with increased blood flow and improved mobilization of fatty acids. It's not a fat-melting feeling. It's simply physiology doing its job in the background. And of course, the later signs become visible small reductions in waist circumference, and less bloating around the midsection. These aren't dramatic overnight changes, but steady, trustworthy ones. Every metabolic improvement eventually reaches a point where progress slows. This doesn't mean failure. It simply means your body adapted and the stimulus needs a small adjustment. For many people, adding just one extra Zone 2 session per week is enough to restart visceral fat mobilization.
Another effective strategy is mixing one session of brief, controlled, higher-intensity intervals into your week. This doesn't replace Zone 2, it complements it. These short bursts increase mitochondrial enzymes and improve overall cardiovascular capacity, which helps your body return to fat oxidation more efficiently during your Zone 2 walks. Sleep quality also plays a role in breaking plateaus. Poor sleep increases cortisol and reduces metabolic flexibility, making visceral fat more resistant. Fixing sleep often restarts fat loss without needing to alter the workouts. If you ever feel stuck, don't assume exercise stopped working. Usually only a tiny tweak is needed, not an overhaul. Zone 2 walking becomes effortless when it stops feeling like a workout and starts becoming part of your daily rhythm. Many people succeed by pairing their walks with something enjoyable, a podcast, a favorite playlist, or a phone call with a friend. Once your brain associates the activity with pleasure, the resistance fades. Another habit-forming trick is scheduling your walks at the same time every day. The human body loves routine, and your energy patterns adapt more quickly when your walks happen on predictable rhythms. Over time, missing a walk feels stranger than doing one. You can also anchor the habit to something you already do, like walking right after waking up, after lunch, or during sunset. Anchoring reduces the mental effort required, turning Zone 2 into a default behavior rather than a conscious decision. By the time Zone 2 becomes automatic, you're not just burning visceral fat, you're maintaining the kind of metabolic health that keeps it from creeping back. And that's the real victory. Turning Zone 2 into an automatic habit doesn't just shrink visceral fat, it protects your long-term metabolic health in a way that compounds over years, not weeks. And the moment this routine stops feeling forced, everything becomes easier. Energy, digestion, sleep, and even mood. It's one of the simplest, most research-backed ways to care for your body. If this video helped you understand the science behind Zone 2 and visceral fat, make sure to support the channel. It truly helps me create more evidence-based content. Hit the like button, subscribe, share this video with someone who needs it, and if you want to support the channel directly, tap the super thanks. It means a lot.